Hey friends! Hey friends, are you ready to get into the hammies and the gluteus maximus, your derriere? So um, back to Tom Myers again. This is the basis point of which I start pretty much all of my work is looking at different fascial chains and seeing for patterns of dysfunction along fascial chains. So we already kind of, you know, went for the calves and the ankles and then how they play into the pelvic floor. So now we're moving up into the hamstrings and this is cutting right through obturators, piriformis, the deep rotators of the hip. So today we're gonna get into that. There is a plethora of underactive gluteus maximuses out there. I know that's a mouthful, right? Just from sitting all day long. And we're gonna take a look too at another fascial chain of how all of those areas, which is the pelvic floor, uh, goes right contiguous into the pelvic floor in the deep core musculature. So let's take a look. Here's our next bit where we can see, we already kind of looked at how the inner thighs played into this. But as we move upwards, really all through there, the hamstrings really are the backside of the core. They are the core's representation into the legs when it comes to locomotion and getting us forward. Inner outer thighs is more about the balance and stability. Hamstrings and glutes is about the oomph. So we can see here all of these deep rotators that we're gonna look at. That is the deep front line, which is Tom Meyer's equivalency to this is the core musculature of the body. Let's get into it. The glutes can get turned off and kind of thwarted from a lot of different areas. So this is going to be a pretty comprehensive foam rolling session, but then we're also gonna double back with a massager to hit some more fine tuned areas that tend to be problem. First, glutes, we're just gonna roll out the glutes because sometimes from being in a chair, they kind of naturally just turn to sleep and then don't activate correctly. So I kind of like pivoting onto one butt cheek, moving it all around, we'll do the other side. Then we can take that into hamstrings. I like this version of the hamstrings. It's just, you can kind of turn it into some active core work by contracting back at the abdomen. You can also play with um, compressing and reaching the foot away as you do that. And then we'll go in for the calves. For the calves, I like to put one leg on top of the other to counterweight. And at any point, feel free to pause on a tender spot here. Like right there, I have a knot. I could pause and just breathe into that. I don't even have to have my weight hovering. I just look at um, foam rolling as a way to get in some extra core work. One thing that we are not gonna do here is roll the inner thighs. They're a big reason why the glutes turn off is they get tight. That was the whole last video, so I would encourage you to go back and do that. I'll also post a link here to a shorter version that you can do. So that was the whole back side, but we didn't do the back and the lats, so that can be another thing. And as you're doing this one, you may actually feel your um, back readjust and pop. Kind of hitting up the side for the lats. And hitting up the side. Okay, so next let's get into some more fine-tuned um, areas using a massager. You don't have to have a massager, you can just use your finger, but I like that vibratory effect of having a massager. I just feel like you get a better release. The action of the glute max is hip extension. So hip extension being like that, like it's pushing my heel backwards. The opposite of that is hip flexion, right? So pulling the knee to the chest in a fetal position. And I think a lot of us know that we have tight hip flexors, particularly if you're sitting and looking at a screen all day long and your knees are coming up towards your chest. So what we just did previously was a little bit more of the superficial musculature with the foam roller. Now we're gonna get into some of the deeper musculature that can thwart the glute max connection and even some kind of really random areas that you wouldn't even think would be connected. Ways to go about this, I have two small balls here that I'll put a link to something similar. Personally, I like this. You can use tennis balls, you could use lacrosse balls. You could also have just a single guy um, to do one spot at a time, which I'll show you in a moment. And then lastly, I really 
like this massager because of this particular pointy part. As we're kind of getting into the abdomen here, you can really sort of fine tune exactly where you wanna have it. You don't wanna pummel yourself or impale yourself, but it does allow you to get a little bit more fine tune of where you wanna be. So we're gonna release the psoas. These are gonna go what I call a ovary area for women, belt loop area for men. So you would lay on your stomach One side may be more tender than the other. Um, you may not really feel anything. Most people are gonna feel something though. So you can bend your knees to intensify it and crisscross ankles, like windshield wiper the ankles. You can windshield wiper both ways. You can also lift. So this is hip extension. Now I'm activating my glute and I'm pushing my hip flexor into the balls. Uh, fun fact for women, and now I'm just kind of rocking side to side. It can be a little intense slash excruciating, which is why I like the softer balls, but uh, releasing here can do wonders during menstruation for cramps. So basically you could have that same idea with this guy, where if I lay on my back, I lift like up in the air and you can kind of feel the psoas sort of jut out. You could go inside of the psoas, sorry, inside of the psoas, some more inner abdomen or outside for more outer aspect of the psoas. The psoas is super long. It connects from here down through the uh, lower back and then attaches in front of the vertebrae all the way up into the back of the diaphragm. So it's a massive muscle. It's known as the fight or flight muscle because it obviously is pulling my hip forward as running, but then it also is what pulls my knees to my chest for um, the fetal position. Personally, I don't get into the idea that it is the fight or flight muscle. I think that we can have fight or flight responses all over the body. Um, it's just one spot that can tend to cause some people more issue than others. But I don't think it's the, the end all be all cure all for things. So now if I go into the piriformis, let's see. I'm gonna go bridging up my hips. I'm gonna put that right smack in the middle of my butt cheek. Here I can do this motion. I can also play with lifting and kind of crossing ankle that way. You can also, if you had a, a lacrosse ball here, keep it in the, the pocket of your butt cheek basically and lay on your side. That's way more intense, especially with a lacrosse ball, same idea. I can rotate my thigh. I can extend my leg. Okay. So that was piriformis so as Some other really crazy areas that I see that can get messed up in this whole glute business is the pec minor, and really the pecs in general. So if I release that, you can just kind of smear as you let your arms open. You can do that and sort of reach. That would get at the pec major. So I'm just kind of smearing at the direction of which the, uh, the muscle fibers go. Pec minor is underneath that, so for that, I would almost like try to pull the pec major muscle off of my ribs. And this one I kind of go, same idea. And that muscle connects all the way from here up into here, right near the biceps. So if you're typing a lot, it's a big problem for a lot of people. Um, it also can impede a full breath cycle, so keeping it loose is important for that reason too. And last other couple random areas, one of which just showed up in my last session even with a client of um, the glute max not turning on because of the neck extensors. And maybe an explanation for this because I do see this pretty often. So this is the perspective that we started this video off with of how the hamstrings connected through the piriformis goes up either side of the spine from Tom Myers. Joseph Schwartz came up with this other idea and said, well, that's all well and good, but what happens when you go to take a step? So you'll see the glute max nice and dark there, but then if you follow it to the other side, it also goes into the shoulder and into the neck and you can't see it super, super well but even into the lower back. So sometimes when I'm trying to get people to access their glute max muscles, they just initially tighten their lower back. My favorite way to get at that is to 
is to cup the lower back, but we're gonna start looking at the opposite shoulder and the neck extensor connection and see about releasing that before we go into our glute max activation and hamstring activation. For releasing the shoulder, you could just simply just rub and massage. So all I'm doing is like so. You can take a soft ball and put it behind the shoulder. You could do that just laying on the floor. You could also lean up against a wall and kind of, you know, rub along that way. You could also purchase a still point inducer. This is only about 20 bucks. You could also get a cranio cradle. And the idea there being that if you put it right at the base of the skull, it acts as a trigger point release. It feels lovely. Um, but in the interim, we can also just use our digits. So I call this pulling the luchador mask off. So I'm prying just at the occipital ridge at the base there. I'm tipping my chin down and I'm letting the back of my neck elongate as I slowly pull off my mask. I can also take this to the sides and slowly, kind of like I'm prying my skull in half. Okay, so that concludes our releasing of the things. Now we're gonna get into stretching, hamstrings, rotators, glute max, before we get into activation. We're gonna start our hamstring stretches with a set of active stretches, and then we'll double back and do some passive stretches. And I'm giving you this extra attractive view as I do this so that you can see the angle at which I'm placing my leg in order to get the active. So I'm gonna lay on my back, and I'm gonna put this out there that this is not for the average person's mobility. So um, if you are inflexible, don't be frustrated. You can just skip onto the passive. Okay, so the action of the hamstring is to pull the heel to the butt, it's to bend the knee. So I'm going to contract and I'm slowing myself down with my arms. And then I'm internally resisting myself as I pull upwards with my hands. I'm going to do two more of those. You can also sort of actively reach your butt backwards towards the floor to intensify that elongation at the end range. So that's one set of hamstrings. Then we're going to go for the other set. I'm going to pull out this way. You may want to choose to have some pillows underneath your head too as you do this. And I'm gonna go for the outer hamstrings. So I'm contracting back through here and elongating. These tend to be real tight on people. Okay, do that to the other side. So I'm grabbing, kicking down, slowing myself down. The idea behind active stretching is that you're taking the rubber band and you're working it both directions, which means you're actually gaining strength as well as flexibility, and that you're not just passively stretching skin. Um, personally, I feel like there's a place for both techniques. Cool, okay. Now let's get to passive. Our passive stretches are stretches that you probably think of when you think of, I'm going to stretch my hamstrings. So that is, I'm just gonna put my leg up on something. You could have this on your bed, your couch, wherever, just on an elevated surface. And then I'm just gonna forward fold. And I'm trying to keep more of a flat back as that's gonna create more of a pull. And the big thing here is make sure that you rotate the thigh because you're gonna hit those various hamstrings, the three of them. You could also do this on the floor and just grab a towel and do the same idea, but definitely make sure you get the foot rotation. And then I'm also gonna add in a twist stretch and I'm actively reaching my butt cheek towards the floor. Cool. 
we'll do the other side. And I also say, have no shame to feel like you have to hold on to something, not have to, but that you want to hold on to something for stability. Because it allows you to be more present in the stretch then. Cool. Now we'll get into our glute and hip rotator stretches. For our active glute and rotator stretch, we're gonna do pigeon because pigeon just has so, many so much bang for the buck. So you'll pull like so. Um, feel free to also put some kind of a bolster, sorry, it would be this butt cheek, underneath like some kind of a pillow. In this case, we're gonna be a little bit more particular about actually trying to get the leg to 90 to target the hip rotators. If this is too much pressure on the knee, um, your alternative is to do the, um, the figure four stretch, this guy, and then press out with the knee and kind of move side to side. But if you can um, be in this position with some help, um, this is definitely the way to go. So I'm getting my leg as close to 90 as I can. Chest is upright. I'm actively pushing my outer ankle into the table so that I'm activating those hip rotational muscles. I'm gonna hold for two to three counts and then I'm gonna relax and I can actually now get deeper. So we'll do two full sets of this, two additional full sets. Okay, so now I'm in my deepest position there. Now I'm going to grab my back leg. You could use a yoga strap or a towel here. I'm gonna kick into my back hand and I'm gonna let my hand win as I pull my quad, sorry, as I pull my foot towards my back. And then I'm gonna let my foot win. So once again, we're doing this active, but also in this way, we're kind of getting um, the fascial stretch by having the body in this position. Okay. We can also get at that hip flexor connection by reaching up and over if you have the core stability to do like that. Breathing into that. And then we'll add in um, just a twist stretch as well. Let's see, I'm gonna go this way. And in this case, I can't really maintain that uh, right angle with my bottom leg. So I'm just kind of letting that go a little bit more relaxed. Okay, so which insides? So we start with trying to get as close to 90 as you can get, actively pushing the outer ankle into the table, trying to feel it contract right about in here, and then releasing. You also want that back knee to be rotated towards the floor, so not letting the leg rotate out. And then I release, and then I kick and release, quad, grab onto the back leg, kicking into that foot, foot wins. Now my hand wins, foot wins, and then I kick out of it. Swivel that into the hip flexor stretch here in the front. So I am reaching this hip forwards, and I do like doing a little side bend here too. Tighter on this side. Okay, and then going in for rotation. So I dive under, I lose some of that 90 degrees. It's a big yoga thing to even kind of do this. You could also reach back and then get the pec. Okay, so now we're gonna get into our activation. Note that this is not strengthening necessarily, but now we wanna make sure that our glutes and our hamstrings are just neurologically connected. As I mentioned earlier, so our two actions here, hamstrings is to bend the knee back and glute is hip extension. I like these just, they're super simple. Um, they're also some of my favorites to do if you're going for a run or a long walk to make sure that these muscles are activated and that you're not doing something like pulling forward to walk forward, which is super common with people who sit for a living. And that is part of what creates this um, 
Some people call it lower cross syndrome of lower back tightness to hip flexor tightness. And so instead we want, I call it the abs to ass. So um, one of the ways to activate the glute, you can actually do this into a wall. I'm actually gonna step forward, is just to push back. Now note that I just stepped forward so that this leg can actually be straight. So I wanna feel like um, my femur is dangling from the socket. Another option here is um, to do bridge pose. And I'll post a link to a previous video series I did of bridge pose. So I'm just holding for a few counts, but I, I can feel it engaging back there. Okay, then I'm gonna show you this angle. So now I'm gonna try to hit those three angles of the hamstring. So, and I always touch here right at my sit bone. So I'm letting the leg go down and I'm curling it up. You would ideally want to go as far into that knee bend as you can. So I think I'm gonna do five of each. Then I'm gonna rotate my thigh outward. Same idea, curling. And here you wanna feel like it's coming more from that outer hamstring. So I just moved my fingers slightly out to the side. Then I'm gonna rotate my thigh inward. Same idea, only now I'm in inner butt cheek. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a different view as I do my other leg. So here, I'm just pulling in. Double check, make sure that your femur is dangling in line with your other leg, with your standing leg. You also have an option here to point or flex the foot. Sometimes flexing the foot can um, make it easier to feel. But I'm gonna go this way, move fingers out, activating the hamstring. If you do enough of these, it's crazy sometimes if I do about 50 or 60 of each, I'll be sore the next day without any actual resistance. Another way to do this is to lay on your stomach and then that way it forces the thigh to be in line. That way you don't have to think about it. Okay. Our last bit of activation is the hip rotators. One simple way to get at the hip rotators is, um, it's a common thing in Pilates, it's called the clam series. I've recorded a video on that in the past, so I'm not gonna double that here, but I will post a link to it. In this case, we're gonna go just in a more relaxed fashion. So my leg is out to the side. You don't wanna go super high here, you wanna kinda keep it at 90, or if some people, if your hip flexors or your groin is really tight and it kind of pulls up a lot, then move your leg back that way so that your pelvis can try to rest as best as possible on the floor. So I'm gonna play with internal rotation now. If you notice as you do this that your whole body is rocking, try to hold your pelvis stable so that we're really just focusing on the rotation of the femur. Flexing here can make a difference as well. You may also feel a stretching in the back of the pelvic floor which is good. Then if I lay on my side, I'm now gonna play with external rotation. We just did internal rotation. You will probably use that top hand to stabilize. The more your body is um, perpendicular to the floor, the easier this is gonna be. So I'm getting my foot down and I'm lifting my knee. I wanna try to keep my inner heel down the whole time now. So I lower lift. I'm gonna make that harder by reaching forwards. This is one where I often do feel that abs to ass connection a lot. Then I'm gonna lift and reach forward and pull back. And there is kind of a swivel that happens where you will feel your thigh kind of go in as you lift. You might see I'm shaking. Okay, we'll do the other side. So I start with my internal rotation. This side is tighter for me, so I can feel, you might be able to see my pelvis is moving. So on this side, I'm gonna hold, 
so I can really isolate. And on this side, I'm feeling more of a pull in my groin. So I could, if I wanted to, go back and do some of that inner thigh foam rolling and then come back and see if I could feel the activation here in a different spot. And then I'm gonna pivot to my external. Lift, getting my inner heel down and lowering and lifting. The first time I ever did this series, I literally could not lift my leg. Like that's how weak my hip rotators were. And it's been a while since I've done it, and it's still, I'm, I'm out of practice, let's say that. And then I'm gonna add in the swivel. Really trying to keep my knee high as I reach forward. All right. Great job. Thank you for watching this episode of the how the glutes and the hamstrings connect into the pelvic floor. An exercise that I didn't get into because I have it recorded, which I will link to right here, is how to use a squat to really work the pelvic floor. I love squats for pelvic floor strength because you get that full idea of the stretch on the descent and then on the ascent getting strength in those muscles. Um, and there's a little tidbit about how the bones move that can help deepen your squat and help you maybe be able to get more flat footed. Um, other than that, if you enjoyed the content here, please subscribe. I'm going to get way deeper into some of the pelvic muscles in the next coming episodes. We're also going to look at how the pelvic floor relates to breath and look at how the pelvic floor has an emotional and energetic connection when um, people have tension and pain there. Feel free to comment below and let me know if you have any feedback or suggestions as I'm moving forward. We'll round out this, this course with a beginner and an intermediate um, series of exercises that you can do to move past this notion of just you know stretching and activating and actually starting to dynamically get some strength in your pelvic floor. Thanks for watching.